Alright, hello everybody, this is GTM. I'm going to be recording this uh, video tutorial for my Photoshop students here. And this uh, video recording or lesson is just going to be a, a breakdown on the basics uh, of Photoshop. You know, just the basic tool sets and uh, the layers and just an introduction into the overall interface here. Alright, uh, right over here this is going to be your control panel with a lot of your tools that you'll be working with and we won't be covering all of them because uh, I'll be uh, introducing to you, introducing you some of these tools with uh, future lesson plans um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, I'll explain a few of them but right here is your tool uh, control panel your tool sets and then over here is your uh, layers panel and you know some of your uh, component windows and stuff now all your windows here if you ever happen to lose them for example like if you lose your layers or you know like I said if they're, they're gone you can X them out right here if you ever lose them or need to get a hold of them just remember you can grab them all from here here's all your windows so I'm gonna click on my layers I'm just gonna lock it over here you can actually snap it to the side and let's see what else uh, I'm gonna throw up my um, you know, I can get my color swatches and all that stuff up here. All right, just remember that's uh, right in here in this area. All right, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click File, New, or it's Control N. You're gonna get this dialog box here, and this is where you can actually um, name your files. And I'm just gonna call this. Uh, we'll just call this Test for now. You got your presets here. Default Photoshop size is US paper, international paper, photo, web, mobile devices, film and video settings, and then of course your custom settings. We're just going to keep it standard for now. I'm working in inches. Also, you have pixels. That's for like web based type of graphics, you know, stuff for flash videos or, uh, you know, Dreamweaver. You work in pixels. As for print, you work in inches. All right, and your resolution when you're working with uh, print, always work at 300 dpi. And if it's web-based or you know digital, which is like you know monitor-based graphics and stuff like that, you work in 72 DPI. So remember uh, when you uh, create your labs and you save your files and you want to uh, post them onto uh, digitalvamp.proboards.com or you know the forums, which eventually I'm going to get a new uh, domain name. So I do apologize about that. But uh, when you post them up, convert them to 72 for the web. Otherwise, you're always you're always gonna work in 300. All right, your RGB mode here, color. You're always gonna work in RGB. And then eventually, uh, if you're going for print, you'll convert it to CMYK. That is because uh, the print colors in CMYK or the colors are closer to the actual printing, you know, paint colors that go onto the printing system or printing whatever devices and stuff. All right. Uh, you're always going to work in 8-bit mode as well, and you'll understand later. If you ever get stuck in 16, which you will, a lot of times will happen, a lot of your filter effects will be grayed out and you won't be able to use them. So let's just go ahead and keep it at 8-bit. All right, I'm going to go ahead and press OK. This is going to pop open. This is your canvas size. As you can see, um, you have your uh, percentage size. You can increase that. Right now we're looking at 25% of the 300 DPI canvas. As you can see, I have my rulers as well up here so I can actually click and drag guidelines just remember also you can turn off those guides and those rulers by going to view and I can take off my rulers or I can go back and turn them back on and which they are control R is your hotkey uh, your guides if you want to turn them on and off you can just click on control H or show extras and I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn those on, but I'm just going to take my move tool here and redrag those out of there. All right. Also, I'm going to I'm going to rotate my canvas. So I'm going to go to image uh, image rotation. I'm just going to go clockwise because I want to work with uh, a landscape style canvas. All right. Your layers here. Usually, your first layer is always locked. You can double click it. This, Dialog will come up, and you can name that. I'm just going to call this. Uh, we'll just call this backdrop, even though it's called background. And of course, you can set different types of colors. 
to map, you know, so you can categorize things later on in the future. I'm just going to go ahead and keep that, I don't know, some random color green. Press OK. As you can see, I have my uh, color here for my layer. Uh, remember, you got your eye that you can turn off and on. This is to turn off your layers. This checkerboard is the transparent layer. So if you ever uh, import graphics from like to another program like Flash and you don't want the white background with it, you always create a layer above it and whatever, you know, let me just drop a, a shape down here and I'll fill that up with a certain color here. Just so you can see what's going on. Use my paint bucket here. All right, as you can see, we have a transparent graphic now, you know. And if I turn that back layer on, you know, it has the white background. All right, so <clears throat> let me just go ahead and uh, keep that unlocked. All right, also you have, uh, remember, in your layers, you can double click and name them. Right here, I'm going to call this uh, blue dot just for now. And if you also click off to the side not on the text because that renames it but if you click off to the side here you can double click and you'll get your layer styles which is a bunch of different settings you know we'll get more into this you got like drop shadows when you check them make sure you also can check the box and then you can you know of course uh, you know play with your settings here to get different effects and there's tons of them here so we'll get more into that later I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel and also remember you can uh, by double clicking here get to your layer style you can also come here and your effects are the same you know here's a, a drop down list or a list where you can actually open up that layer style all right uh, let's go ahead and um, open up an image now there's a couple ways we can do this I'm gonna go ahead and delete this layer a couple ways you can do it you can right click delete layer or you can actually just cl click and drag before I uh, delete it, you can also right click, duplicate the layer, and then give it a name, and it duplicates your layer. Or, let me control Z, you can actually gl click your layer, drag it to this layer right here, icon, and that will duplicate it. And control Alt Z is multiple backspaces. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and, yeah, it's backspace all the way, or undo all the way, I should say. All right, um, let me go ahead and uh, go to edit and step uh, undo select and you know redo selection. That's control Z. So if I hit control Z multiple times, it kind of control Alt Z. It brings back my steps. Oops, not control Alt Z. I apologize. Let me go to uh, let me re rotate my canvas. Now let me step forward here. Let me unlock that. Uh, let's just go ahead and create a new layer. All right, I'm going to go ahead and drop that shape back down, fill it in blue. All right, another thing about our layers here. Um, you have, uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this a couple times. So I have three layers, you know, three layers. And also I can grab those and I'm just going to reposition them. All right, so I have three different layers. Now, the one thing here is, uh, if you notice, I have auto select turned on. You might have it off. Sometimes you switch it on and off. Right here, I'm going to uncheck it. That just lets you know I, I can't auto select the shape. It I can only grab it from the layer. So this helps out when you're trying to keep things organized sometimes and you don't want to grab certain layers. Or if you just turn them on, you can actually click and it will go to that layer. All right. Now also, I want to, to show you that um, we have these folders here. I can click a folder, and I can click and drag these up to the top, just like you can click and drag a layer and, you know, reposition them. Uh, you can double click and name the folder. We'll just call this, uh, I don't know, blue dots. Now within this folder, you can actually click and drag certain layers in there, or I can click and hold control grab multiple layers drop them in there and then you can see that I have all those layers in that folder kind of a good way to organize your stuff all right also uh, I'm gonna here I'm gonna go ahead and control alt Z so we don't have the folder anymore there we go 
Uh, I'm going to teach you a little hotkey here. If you hit Control E, that kind of merges the top layer to the bottom one under it. Now we have everything on one layer. I'm going to Control Alt Z back. And the same thing is basically taking your layers, right clicking them, and you can go to uh, Merge Layers, and it merges them. Now, if you want to say you just want to, like, if you just want to merge two layers, you can just select those two, right click, and then just say Merge Visible. Whoops, not Merge Visible, but let me click on those two, right click, and then you can just uh, merge just those layers. So let me do that again. One, two, I'm holding control, right click, and it merges just those layers. All right, um, let's see what else. Uh, let's go ahead and, uh, I'm gonna hit control E and kind of merge them one by one. There, we'll call these, uh, right click, three dots. All right, let's go to our um, tools section here, our control panel, I should say, or tools. Right here, you have your marquee tool. You got different styles. Most of the time, you'll probably use your rectangular marquee tool, which is your M key. You have your elliptical tool. And if you hit M, you can actually shuffle through those, I think. Uh, maybe not. So I guess you got to manually do it. So I'm going to go here, go to M. As you can see, I'm on that layer. I can grab certain ones, certain sections of that image. And then I can take my move tool and just like kind of cut it off. Remember your hotkey for your uh, move tool. So if I were to select something, you hit B. Now you can actually kind of move it out. Now also on your marquee tools, you can actually click, hold down shift, and grab multiple sections. Either hit delete key, you can delete them off. Move them. Oops, hold on. Take your move tool, move them out of the way. That could be a really good, you know, that could be a pretty good tip. Now let's see what else. Um, remember, if you select something, you gotta. Now you can't do anything with it, or you know, you're trying to, you know, break something off, or you're trying to grab. Uh, all of a sudden, you're trying to grab something, you can't move it. You might want to, you know, make sure you go to your marquee tool and just kind of click somewhere in the canvas, and it resets it. All right, um, and don't forget, like when you hold it down you have other options and that goes with all tool sets if you see a little black triangle that means there's more tool sets under it <clears throat> all right uh, also you have your uh, your lasso style marquee tools you know here goes uh, lasso tool polygon lasso and magnetic lasso if I click on the lasso tool I can actually draw around you know and then take my move tool and move that or I can actually you know draw <coughs> certain parts and break that off. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, and then of course you have your polygon lasso. You kind of click, and it does kind of like right angles or corners. And then of course you know you can grab those, or like if say you just want to grab a an area really quick, you can do that with your um, oops. You can do that with your lasso tool polygon lasso tool that is all right and then of course the last one you have your magnetic lasso which basically if I click notice I can drag slowly and it, it basically magnetics right around you know the different contrasting colors and then of course you can close it off and oops let me just do that sometimes you you know you don't want to go too fast and then Ah, that can be a little tricky. I bear I rarely use this tool. There you go. All right, let's go ahead and reset that. All right, um, of course you have this tool again. Your quick selection, your magic wand. That's a quick way of just grabbing solid colors. Don't uh, try to get too comfortable using the magic wand too much, especially when you're cleaning up photos, and I'll explain later on. And then of course you have your quick selection tool which you know you can just kind of quickly draw around and select certain areas all right um, your eyedropper obviously uh, you click on it and it samples that color so let's go ahead and you know let's take our magic wand let's select this color here or this dot here I'm gonna swap that those are how you can swap your colors this is your uh, 
your two colors. Uh, so I'm going to swap it to yellow, go to my paint bucket, and let's just fill that in yellow. All right, and then I'm going to double click my swatches, and you can see I can change these to any kind of random color. And here, let's go make that purple or something pink. And then I'll click on this one, and I'll make this uh, red. All right, as you can see, I got a pink and red here. So if I click on my swatch, I can select that, and I'll turn it to yellow if I click that one. And then I can, you know, select blue, and then I'll turn that blue. All right, uh, you got your slice tool. This is mainly for uh, web and stuff. We won't cover too much on that. Um, you got your spot healings and red eye tools. We'll, we'll later on demonstrate that. You have your brushes, pencils, and color replacement tools. The one, the two that you probably, or the one that you mess with the most is your brush tool. If you click it, notice you have your brushes up here. If I click down here, you have all kinds of styles of brushes. And of course, these are custom brushes that I've loaded in. And I'll explain, you know, certain custom brushes. I mean, there's tons of them out there. To be honest, a lot of the secret to Photoshop is understanding your custom brushes. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, launch up a, a website here. And a great website you should know is www.myphotoshopbrushes. Enter that, you get tons and tons of awesome brushes to use. So if you go here, you got brushes, and then these are all different style brushes you can use, and there's a big list of them. And I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm sure there's tons of websites with free brushes, but do you know, like I said, uh, feel free to search around for them, and like I said, get used to using brushes. Uh, let me go ahead and download one, and I'll I'll just use these uh, floral corners right here. These are pretty neat. I'm gonna click on that. And then obviously I can sit here and download it. I'm gonna go ahead and download the file. All right, so if I were to use that brush, I'm gonna go ahead and just minimize this. Here's my brush. I'm gonna unzip it, drag my ABR file, I believe. Here's your brushes. Now I normally what I do is uh, I I have a brush folder with just nothing but custom brushes in it. You know, so I'll usually make a folder and just call these custom brushes. And I'll always drag my custom brushes and save them. And always take your brushes with you. So if I were to load that custom brush, you know, I can go to, um, you know, I can just uh, click here. This little uh, dot right here, this arrow with the circle on it, just click here. You can actually come here and load brushes. And then there goes my custom brushes. I'm going to click that, load it up, and that loads it within my panel. So, um, you can see the custom brushes there now. Here's the florals, and I'm just gonna click a new layer. And here I'll make them, uh, whatever, make them green, just so you can see. See, now we got some brushes we can mess with. And like I said, I'll get more into custom brushes later. All right, uh, I just want to show how you can load them now. All right, of course your clone stamp, right here. Uh, if you go on that tool, if I click on a certain area say like uh, I'm gonna hide this layer I'm gonna click on this blue dot and I can actually move it and it kinda clones it over here now that all depends on what brush you're using if you notice on your brushes we have different styles of brushes and your you know your main ones are your hard brushes and your soft brushes or your feather brushes so if I went to a hard brush that is a hard edge brush and by the way I'm bracket I'm using my brackets to resize my brushes that is uh, right by your P key on your keyboard two brackets you can go in and out and resize them so this is a hard brush if I were to you know alt you notice you see a target here like a sniper's target and I'm gonna just kind of click the edge here and then you can see I'm getting that portion of the, the brush and it's cloning it and now like I said this is a hard brush so as you can see it and I'm just sampling different parts and just kind of whatever randomly doing nothing anyways just letting you know that's your uh, your clone stamp and Personally, I always work with the. I always work in feather brush mode. All right. Um. Back to our brushes, though. You know, we can go to our feather brush, and I'm gonna go ahead and resize that. I'm gonna go ahead and hide this layer, and I'm gonna create a new layer. And I have a. As you can see, I'm just gonna switch my color, maybe like a baby blue here. 
And with my feather brush, as you can see, it's set to 500. Usually when I click here, I can always, I always tend to click over here to reset, you know, my tools. Notice when I brush, it's like a spray can, so it's a feather brush. Now if I switch it to a hard brush, and that's 13, I want to crank that up to 150, as you can see it's 150. That's a, oops, let me switch my colors. Now this is a hard style brush. All right, um, let's drop this down. We don't need to worry about our history tool. I mean, if you want to click it open or find your history panel, you can come here and go to uh, history. And this basically keeps a track of all what you've done. So like if I were to sit here and um, grab, you know, you can see what parts that we were actually doing during that time. And you can actually grab those if you want, and I believe that you can just trash certain parts, delete state paint bucket, you can delete certain things. I'm just going to control Z for now. Like I said, that's your history brush. Alright, so I just deleted everything beyond that. So now we're just back to our three dots. Alright, um, of course your eraser brush is just like your your paintbrush. The cool thing is you're going to actually use these two a lot. Your eraser brush works just like the paintbrush. The cool thing is uh, you can actually, uh, like here's your feather eraser and it erases. Or you can go hard, hard edge, and that erases as well. Let me increase the size here. There. Now the cool thing about eraser brushes, they work with custom brushes too. So I can actually use an eraser and let's go get that floor design I loaded. We'll just drop one in here. Now that works like an eraser now. So if I click into it, you know, it erases. And like I said, we'll get more into our opacities and our, you know, how strong our brushes are. So I'm just kind of deleting that section, cutting into it by using an eraser. Pretty neat, huh? All right, uh, of course your paint bucket, you know, you have your gradients and paint buckets. We'll get more into that later. And you know these tools, your blur, sharpen, smudges. We'll talk about those later. And your hand dodge tool, your pen tool. We'll talk about later. Your text tool. We'll get into it a little more. You know, let's, when we start designing things. Uh, let's see your pan tool. Basically, that's your space bar. And say I were to zoom up. You know, I'm zooming up on my scene, and then I'm taking a my pan tool, and I can pan around. Or that's basically your navigator. Or you can hit your space bar, so check it out. I'm in my move tool. If I hit space bar, I can pan around certain areas. Now remember, that is your navigation. So I can go down to my windows, navigator, and there it is. You can see your navigator, and you kind of pan around certain areas. Now you can see we're seeing 100% of our 300 DPI scene. So I'm going to minimize that back down, and let's just bring that back down to 25%. There we go. And like I said, uh, of course, these are your, your swatches, your colors. Okay, that's pretty much just the, the basic breakdown of your tool sets, your layers. Um, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and start our first lesson plan. The first thing I'm going to talk about, uh, we'll be going over some uh, layer blends and basically, you know, custom brushes and making a collage of some sort learning how to use your layer blends and your layer masks. All right, until next uh, lesson, uh, thanks for watching.